Now, let's talk about discrete conservation laws. And to start with, I mean, all the elementary particles, they are basically characterized by the set of uh, quantum numbers. And these quantum numbers, uh, basically, they give the intrinsic properties uh, of the, these elementary particles. The, the existence of these, these quantum numbers basically tell us that, that there are some symmetries. Uh, uh, there are some symmetries in, in, the, in the regime uh, of these uh, elementary particles. Uh, and the symmetry of the systems of the particles, uh, it exists in, in st steps. And when this symmetry exists uh, in some formal steps, we, we call this thing as discrete uh, symmetry. Discrete symmetry. And, and the, the examples of uh, discrete uh, symmetries are, the first one is, is parity, uh, and, and then, then, then the next one is, uh, and, and in parity what we have, we have uh, we have uh, space uh, inversion uh, and then we have time reversal and uh, and we have charge conjugation uh, and that charge conjugation is, is symbolized as C. Now let's talk about this uh, uh, this conservation of parity. Conservation of, of parity. Now, now, uh, now, according to, to, to the conservation of parity, what's uh, important here is that, that if we have a phenomena uh, and, and this phenomenon occurs in, in nature, then uh, the, 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 the mirror image of uh, the, the, the mirror image of this phenomenon should also uh, equally occur in nature. This is what, what we call as uh, uh, conservation of parity. So parity cannot be uh, achieved uh, by the rotation, uh, uh, which is a continuous transformation in three-dimensional space. And hence, uh, we have discrete symmetry here. We have discrete symmetry here uh, in case of conservation of parity. And this parity is conserved in the processes uh, involving a strong uh, interaction, uh, strong uh, and, and electromagnetic interaction. So we have strong and electromagnetic interaction. So, uh, so this parity is, uh, is, is con conserved in these processes. Uh, strong interaction and electromagnetic interaction. Uh, but uh, 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 it, it, it's also true at, at the same time uh, that that parity is not conserved in in beta decay, and uh, uh, and uh, so we can say here that that uh, this uh, uh, it was basically probably it was probably in 1957 it, it was uh, uh, it was Li Yang. It was Li Yang who proposed that that parity is not uh, uh, conserved uh, in beta decay. Uh, this is because uh, since beta decay, which which was uh, uh, which was conserved conservation of parity uh, when it comes to to weak interactions like beta decay. Now the the next important thing is. Uh, is the is uh, let's go with with the charge conjugation, uh, the charge conjugation. Now this charge conjugation, this this operation is is symbolized by C. Uh, so uh, we have an operator uh, uh, that's called charge conjugation uh, operator. So let me assume that that. This charge conjugation operator is is C, and it is similar to the parity in in many ways. I mean, charge conjugation operator converts the the sign 
of all additive quantum numbers like charge baryon number baryon number lepton number strangeness etc and what it does uh, it, it converts it, it converts uh, uh, it, it converts the particle uh, from one uh, state to another state and uh, i should say here that uh, the uh, does the, this c operator converts all po particles to their corresponding antiparticles and and vice versa now if i take an example of charge here suppose q and if I put an operation C on it, I'm going to get minus Q. Now, for charge conjugation operator C, uh, what it does, uh, it, it converts particle into its antiparticle uh, and vice versa. So, if I have a particle, you operate it by C, you will, you will get an antiparticle. And if we have antiparticle and we subject it to C, we, we get a particle. So what it means is that quantum mechanical state of a particle, say if I, if I talk about a proton, if I talk about the proton, so under charge conjugation operator uh, C, uh, what what it does basically is it, it, it transforms the state of this proton uh, into an antiproton and and I can I can say so if I have proton I operate it by C I will get an antiproton and now if I have an antiproton if I subject it to C I will get a proton so application of this charge conjugation C uh, if, if we apply this C twice, what's going to happen? We're going to get back our original state of the particle. So uh, I should say here that, that if I have C square for a particle, it's going to give me the same particle. So if I have to, to represent it that way, that means the C square will give me the anti-particle and another C will give me the original particle. So charge conjugation, uh, so here we can have that C square is, is, is one, so this implies that C is plus minus one. Okay, so uh, this charge conjugation is, uh, it is, it is it's a multiplicative quantum number, just like parity. And this charge conjugation uh, is, is conserved in strong, and electromagnetic electromagnetic interactions but uh, it certainly is is violated in in weak interactions violated violated in weak interactions now the third one here is is the time reversal now uh, time reversal symmetry T time reversal symmetry now this this time reversal operator which which is uh, which I have chosen here as T it was basically discovered by 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 Wigner Schwinger and Bell and what what they established they, they, they established uh, that uh, that that inverting time exceeds from say t to t dash uh, is minus times t uh, it's not going to alter the, the physical phenomenon so if we have uh, an inversion of time axis from t to t dash and and, and this T dash is, is the negative of T, it's not going to, to change the, the, the physical phenomenon. Now, a physical quantity which remains unchanged when time is reversed, 
uh, that is uh, this t is uh, is simply made minus t uh, this thing is known as time reversal we call this thing as time reversal simply now uh, if i if i take a simple example of acceleration if i take an example of acceleration now what's acceleration uh, if I assume that x is the displacement or y is the displacement, then the double derivative of y with respect to time will give me uh, give me the acceleration. So I can write down d by dt of uh, dy by dt. Now, uh, replacing this t by minus t, so d by d of minus t, dy by d of minus t. What's it going to give me? It's going to give me d2y by dt2. So according to, to time reversal uh, symmetry, any process can be proceeded either in, in the forward direction or in the backward direction in time without any change, uh, without any change. Now, now if the motion uh, picture displays a possible process, we have a motion picture and it, it describes a possible process, then the process would appear uh, equally likely when the motion of the picture runs in the backward uh, direction or, uh, or if it, if it uh, moves uh, in the forward direction. Now, in other words, what it means is that, that this time reversal, this T, uh, this time reversal operator uh, that that reverses the process in, in time. So it, we have an operator; it reverses the the, the process in time. So uh, what does it mean? The the arrow in in, in the reaction equation or a decay process is uh, is reserved. Now uh, a reaction or a decay is 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 symmetric under this time uh, time. Uh, time reversal if the reverse uh, reaction or decay is possible. Now, the, the, the formal example for this kind of thing is the pair production. I mean, the creation of electron and positron pair uh, is basically the, the, the reverse of the annihilation, which occurs when the electron and positron meet. So, so the pair production and its time reversal uh, uh, can be demonstrated. So if I have a photon, uh, what I'll have, I will have an electron and an anti-electron, a positron. And with time reversal, uh, what I will have, I'll have, I'll have electron and the positron and what I'll get out of is, uh, is the gamma ray photon. So here we have pair production and here we have annihilation it would be right to show the arrow of time here now uh, the, the macroscopic world is uh, uh, is not time reversal symmetric uh, this is because if, if the motion picture of an event say an oscillation of a pendulum if we have a pendulum and and uh, if, if we choose this oscillation of the pendulum in, in an air, and if we observe this, this oscillation of this pendulum, then we, we can identify whether the picture is moving in the forward direction or it is moving in the backward direction. Uh, it, it, can be, it can be perfectly identified. Okay, uh, and now let the picture of this pendula, pendulum uh, from the instant it is displayed from rest uh, suppose this this is its resting position. Uh, suppose it is displayed uh, uh, from 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 its rest position to to an instant when the oscillation of this pendulum decreases considerably due to the air resistance, and, and this whole phenomenon is recorded. Now now the sequence of the oscillations of this pendulum uh, uh, will be easily distinguishable uh, if the picture runs either in the forward direction or it runs in the backward direction. Now, any system is says, said to have time reversal symmetry uh, if the motion picture of the system uh, 
one cannot decide whether it is shown in the forward direction or uh, it is uh, shown in the reverse direction. And this time reversal uh, invariance, it holds good in strong interactions, strong interactions and, uh, and uh, electromagnetic interactions, electromagnetic interactions. But, but it's perfect, it perfectly fails, it's, it perfectly is, uh, is violated in weak interactions like beta decay.